Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is going to be a short one today. I just needed to get something off my chest that's been hanging there a while. So uh, indulge me in this brief commentary. Now, I came across this tweet some time ago. And you know what? I, I For some reason, it really just kind of it has been needling me. I, I keep looking at it. And um, and here we are. So the tweet reads that feeling when a foundation says it has limited resources, but it actually has 800 million under management. Come on. Okay, so this attitude by grant seekers, especially the professional ones, it always shocks me. And yet it, it also fascinates me. So I, I find it interesting how people – they always think they know better how to spend someone else's money. I mean, we don't know anything about this foundation's long-term obligations and their investment strategy. Uh, for all anyone knows, 90% of that money might already be committed to existing or future projects. Uh, I did a longer podcast explaining how foundation grant-making works so this is going to be just a little bit of a kind of a recap here. You know, in short, foundations are required to grant 5% of their previous year's average net assets, which includes all of their administrative expenses. So what looks like a lot of money isn't always a lot of money. Now let's say for discussion purposes and round numbers that 800 million was this foundation's previous year's average net assets. 5% of that would be $40 million, And let's further say that it spends 10% or $4 million on administrative costs. That would leave $36 million to distribute. Again, we're going to keep this very basic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, to you and me, that seems like a big number. And it's really not that much. Now, here's why. A foundation with $36 million to grant isn't going to make $360, $100,000 one-year grants. And that's insane. Uh, they wouldn't have the staff capacity to handle the oversight workload. Not to mention, to get 360 awards, they would need to review and score thousands of proposals. Instead, uh, they're more likely going to make 10 to 30 large multi-year grants between $1 and $3 million spread out over, say, three to five years. Whatever is left over, they could use to make smaller grants. You know, this does a couple of things. First, it helps them go through a lot of the money they need to spend on grants without overburdening uh, the staff. And secondly, they now have funds committed for several years into the future. Uh, let's say next year they have another $36 million to grant out. Um, <clears throat> most of that is already committed to the existing multi-year grants. And this doesn't even take into account that foundations can set aside funds for major projects for up to 60, six zero months. That is, they can set aside five years' worth of funds in one year, and it would count against the amount they need to distribute that year. So back to the $36 million I used as the example before, a foundation could set aside $30 million in one fell swoop, leaving only $6 million to make grants with that year. The bottom line is... Every foundation sets their own rules. Like it or not, that's just part of the game. Uh, if they say they have limited resources or uh, they don't accept unsolicited applications or they prefer to identify grantees on their own, there's not a lot you can do about that except move on. Uh, there are a lot, I mean a lot of private and corporate foundations out there if you don't like the rules of one 
or if you think they're you know not fair, look for another foundation. Now this is why I prefer going after federal grants and you know state and local government grants because the rules and the process are pretty much the same for every grant and every department. And if a, if a department violates the procedures, there's a process to appeal. Not so with private foundations, you know, and that's fine. It's their money, it's their rules. Um, so I don't know, I just had to get this off my chest. Probably, it's probably more useful for me than, than for all of you, but I appreciate you listening. That's um, that's really all I have. So thanks for listening and indulging me. If you have any questions, uh, just feel free to email me through my website or reach out on social media. I'm uh, here to help in any way that I can. If you found this useful, uh, like it or give it a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. I always enjoy feedback. And uh, make sure you're subscribed and uh, you have your notifications turned on so you don't miss uh, future presentations. Okay, cool. <laughs> thanks. See you next time.